Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So for all things Vespa, whether you're doing a service on your scooter or you want to accessorize your vintage or modern Vespa, we got you covered, ScooterWest.com. So today I'm going to show you how to do a coolant flush on the updated Vespa GTS 300 HPE. So pretty much 2020 and later Vespa GTS 300s, they have several changes to the motor. It's the same basic design as the GTS all the way back to the original GT200 from the early 2000s. But they've made some changes that fortunately make it a little easier to flush the coolant on these and set up for success if you're doing it all by yourself. So let's go into the materials you're gonna to need to do a coolant flush. Uh, you're just gonna need some basic tools and you're gonna need approximately a half gallon or two liters of coolant. And I recommend a ready mixed coolant, uh, ethyl glycol organic mixed coolant. If you're looking for the original coolant that was in the scooter from the factory, uh, we have the Any Bike S coolant. You can see it's in this lovely bag. It's kind of fluorescent pink in color. And the part number on this is Moto AGIP. Moto Agip, just an old part number. We've had at Scooter West for several years. Uh, we exclusively import this to the United States. You're gonna need two bags of this if you're gonna do a full coolant flush on your Vespa GTS. Alternately, if you wanna change the color of the coolant, same chemistry, but this is a, uh, an American manufacturer, Maxima. This is a uh, half gallon, so it's just enough to do a full coolant flush on a GTS. And the part number on this is 78-9955, so all you need is one of these. And before we get started, you wanna make sure the motor's cool. I won't be touching the exhaust if uh, it was run, so uh, let the scooter either cool down for about 30 minutes or um, just start with a cool scooter. And I'll go through step-by-step -step on how to do this. And for the most part, most of these steps all apply to the prior generations of the GTS. You can look at prior videos that I've done in the past. If you go to the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel and search Vespa coolant flush, you'll see other times where I've changed the coolant on prior generations of GTS uh, 250s, 300s, GT200. It's slightly different, but pretty much all the same steps. So let's get right to it. Uh, just kind of go over the tools as we go through it. It's all basic tools. So the coolant reservoir is accessible on this right hand uh, knee pad, as I like to call them. I don't know what the real term is for these, but I've always called them a knee pad. And T25 Torx driver, you can actually find that in the factory tool kit. Several warning labels only found on uh, scooters in the United States. Again, another warning label, pretty much just telling you don't open this while it's hot. Um, so you wanna get access to this coolant cap. And this may be hand tight, uh, alternately, you could use a tool CN. Look in the description, there is a tool that uh, is for removing the fork stem that also removed this. Of course, the, the scooter's cool. But just go ahead and leave the cap off at this point. And looking down in there, it's just above the min mark. And that's fine. It just needs to be between this max mark, which is like kind of that white bar up there, and the min mark that's just covered with uh, green fluid. This one's had a coolant flush. And if you're wondering how often you wanna change the coolant, if you look at the original factory uh, service manual or the owner's manual, uh, Vesper Piaggio recommends every two years. And I would recommend the same, especially with the modern organic coolants to kind of break down. The Maxima coolant is gonna last a bit longer. You probably get a little bit longer service life. Of course, there's even higher end coolants. You need to completely flush the, the scooter but there's 10 year coolants that are available as well. But uh, not something I really recommend for this engine. You'd have to really completely flush it. Um, so you leave the cap off with it cool. Uh, next, we're gonna pop the scooter off the center stand. We're gonna put a tray under the return hose of the cooling system, right at the water pump on the right hand side cover of the engine. So the water pump's located on the right hand side of the engine. In the past, I've removed the water pump cover and you can replace the gasket. On newer scooters, they use a nice reusable clamp on the hose, so I just recommend taking off the hose 
And in order to make this a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic side skirt. Just makes doing an oil change or a coolant flush much easier. It is possible to do it without removing this. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video. Essentially, I'm gonna remove the Torx fastener here, T25. Right under here is a uh, 10 millimeter fastener. Remove the tail light and a couple more fasteners from the rear. So let's get right to it. So number two, just standard Phillips driver. You can, I think you can even use a flat or a seven millimeter um, socket. Three different ways. You can see it's already starting to drip. Just go ahead and loosen the clamp. I like to loosen them quite a bit and break them free. Uh, this is where things are gonna start getting messy right here. And another thing you could do is you could actually temporarily thread your cap on just to kind of make a vacuum seal so you don't get uh, a real strong flow of coolant. And I'm gonna show you some tricks on pulling a coolant hose off. So you can see, if I pull it, you're never gonna get that off. There's a specific pick tool that will get around there, but usually just a, a skinny flat bladed screwdriver, you just gotta break um, some of the stiction of the rubber hose that's on the aluminum house, you know, water pump housing here. So you can take a skinny flat and just kind of work your way around the coolant hose and kind of break the stiction of the hose. Or you could use, this is specifically for coolant hoses, kind of a hooked um, pick. You're not actually damaging the coolant line. You're just kind of breaking free the, um, the stiction of the line that's been on there for quite a long time. So before you pull all the way off, kind of let it dribble out. You can see I have a standard car size uh, oil pan right there. Um, and just carefully pull that back. I usually just pull it just enough to kind of block the flow. And then you could slowly release the cap. And you can see the goal is, you know, not to get too much on the floor. Alternately, if you don't have a lift like I have here, you could put the scooter on the side stand, which is a kickstand on the side there. Um, and have a helper tip it. Actually, you're gonna get more cooling out if you tip it towards the right. So um, it's, the flow is kind of slowed down. At this point, I could pull the hose down and usually I just, with exhaust like that, I could kind of um, allow the last to drip out. So that's not all the coolant. I would say that's maybe one liter of coolant that's drained out or a little bit more than one liter. You probably lost everything out of the radiators and the reservoir, but the return line that goes into the thermostat has quite a bit of coolant in it as well. Um, compressed air can help you out get, getting all the coolant out. It can get pretty messy. Uh, if you had a rusty coolant system, you had rust coming out of this, that's kind of bad news because that means your cylinder um, jackets starting to uh, degrade from broken down coolant. I would recommend flushing the whole system with just regular water until you get as much of the rust out. You don't want to put coolant on top of a rusty system. You want to try to get most of the rust out. So we're going to go ahead and open up the seat. I'm going to open up the bleeders and we'll be able to uh, drain a little bit more coolant out of the system. So in the engine bay, this is your thermostat housing and your return hose right here. And there's a pair of bleeders. This is one that's on the head. And we'll go ahead and pull that all the way out. And make sure you have a really good Allen key that fits tightly into that bleed screw. And you can hear more water dribbling out of the system once you break that free, because you're, you're breaking a siphon. So that's the bleed screw. Uh, if you damage this, we will have these on our, our Scooter West web store. And there's another bleed screw. Just have another Allen key ready to go. Go ahead and pull that out. And it's the identical part. It's just got a, a tip on it that um, seals off the system. So once you get those off, you could tip the whole scooter to the right to get a little bit more coolant out. Alternately, you can have compressed air and you could blow through both your coolant reservoir and through these holes to get the last remaining coolant out. You're not gonna get all of it out unless you do you know, pull all the hoses off but you can get quite a bit of the coolant out of the system.
So if you're looking for an easy way to get all the, or most of the remaining coolant out of the system, you have compressed air. This is an air gun right here. And those bleed screws I removed, you can just carefully put some compressed air through those bleed, bleed screws and you see, kind of get the last remaining coolant out. And you could repeat the same process with the coolant reservoir and the secondary uh, bleed screw, kind of just to get the last of the, the coolant out. You know, and I would say that's perfectly adequate. There's probably only 10 or 15% remaining of the old coolant. So at this point, we'll kind of clean up. We want to dispose of that coolant in environmentally uh, correct manner. Most auto parts stores will take old coolant or there could be a, a household waste um, disposal event in your neighborhood that will take old coolant, you know, store it in an old milk jug. But at this point, we'll clean up and we'll refill the system and I'll show you how to bleed the system and set yourself up for success and verify the cooling fan works and you're all set. All right, so go ahead and wipe up the remaining coolant. Uh, it's not gonna really hurt anything. It will just smoke a little bit when it's on the exhaust. Uh, not really the best thing to have on any of the painted surfaces. Um, but I tend to like to wipe up the majority of the coolant because we wanna make sure you don't have any coolant leaks when you reassemble the system. So make sure it's pretty clean inside this hose. You may wanna clean that out or maybe if you're watching this uh, video 10 years from now, maybe your coolant hoses will need to be replaced by then. So keep that in mind. Uh, on a 2020, you're just doing a flush. There's no need to service any of these hoses. But on the older GTSs, they're kind of getting to that age where some of them need these hoses. So go, go ahead and tighten the clamp. The, the clamp, I would leave it at the six o'clock position on the hose, kind of right at the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and put both bleeder screws in just lightly. I'm gonna leave this pan under here because you're gonna have some additional uh, drips from the cooling system as we allow those bleeders to overrun with coolant. So go ahead and reinstall the pair of bleed screws. Don't need to seat them, just, just enough where they're closed and that's it for right now. All right, so this coolant is ready to use. It's got a safety seal on it that you could either pierce or cut, cut away. And we're gonna go ahead and fill this up right up to the top mark. It should use about half the container. So the coolant reservoir is filled nearly to the max level. I've used about three quarters of that Maxima coolant bottle. Then we're gonna move back to the thermostat housing located on the top of the cylinder head. So I have my Allen key. This is your bleeder screw that's located on the cylinder head. And you can see it's already kind of um, letting air out. So go ahead and remove this screw. And all you wanna do is, and that's about all you need to do. So it's, you can hear air coming out and that's as far as you need to go with that. We'll go ahead and tighten that. Just give it a little snug. You do not want to over tighten those. Um, and then you're going to move on to the top of your thermostat housing here. So go ahead and remove the bleeder screw. You'd already see bubbles coming out of the, the coolant hose here. And pull it up. It's a little messy. You don't want to let too much. That's all you need to do. Just enough to let the air out of the top the upper radiator hose. Very simple compared to the old one where you had to really, you know, work on it for a while to get it, um, get all the air out of it. And sometimes you would not get the air out of it. The GT200s were even worse. And just go ahead and make sure those are both tight. And we'll take our blow gun. We're gonna blow this remaining coolant off here. Just make sure we don't have any coolant leaks when we run the system. So go ahead and top the reservoir up just to the high, the maximum level. It's just gonna need a tiny splash. And that's about it. You do not wanna go over the maximum level because you need to have expansion available in the tank when the motor warms up. If you do not, you'll end up with a lap full of coolant. 
So we'll go ahead and put the cap back on. Next step is go ahead and run the scooter. So just tighten it by hand, perfectly adequate. And we'll go ahead and start the scooter. So don't be alarmed if you have some steam coming off your header pipe. It's pretty normal. Um, we're gonna allow the scooter to warm up. And what you wanna be checking is you wanna feel the upper radiator hose um, and the thermostat. So the thermostat's getting warm so you know the coolant's starting to conduct um, heat through it. And once the upper radiator hose starts getting warm, we're gonna continue to allow it to idle. We're gonna rev it up for about 10 seconds to allow it to purge any of the air out of the system. So this may take several minutes, especially on a cold day, to get the upper thermostat hose warm. So, and I'm talking warm where you can just touch it. We're not, we're not touching the upper hose when it's at full operating temperature. So, you know, just to verify that coolant is actually flowing. I mean, if you had other problems with the scooter, you might have a problem with the thermostat or the water pump impeller is uh, broken. Uh, obviously, doing a coolant flush isn't gonna fix those uh, problems. You know, on a much older scooter that may have those kind of issues. For the most part, the cooling systems are very reliable on the Vespa GTSs. Uh, the service intervals on the water pump are pretty far between. Obviously, allowing bad coolant and rust to go through the system is gonna shorten the life of the cooling system components. So that's why you're doing a coolant flush, is to keep corrosion down. You know, the, the corrosion uh, inhibiting properties of the coolant break down as it's thermally cycled and aged. So that's why Piaggio recommends change it every two years. So the hose is already getting a little warm. Feel the thermostat's almost hot to the touch. I would say it's about 65 degrees Celsius, maybe 125 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's definitely circulating coolant. It's on the center stand right now. And we're gonna go ahead and rev it up just a little bit. And with the traction full system, you know, it's, it's um, not going to allow you to rev it up. So you, you typically want to turn your traction control system off and you're able to rev the motor up. All right, so the scooter has been idling for approximately five or 10 minutes at this point. And the next step is you do want to reach in here and feel the tops of both of the radiators. So this is a radiator uh, outlets and the inlets are right beside the front fender. And I would stick your fingers in the upper louver and kind of feel across both the left and the right radiator. Make sure they're evenly hot across both of them. Um, if only one radiator is warm, there may be air in the system or a blockage or issues with the radiators. So just something you want to verify. The next step, it's just the waiting game. Pretty much you're going to need to wait anywhere from 10 minutes on a warm day to about 20 minutes on a cool day for the scooter to to come up the full operating temperature, which is around 102, 105 degrees Celsius, like 215 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And once it gets up to that point, there's an electronically controlled fan that will come on and it's located on the left side radiator. So you wanna verify that fan comes on. Um, there's not really any indication if you have a jammed fan and a blown fuse, uh, other than you'll have an overheat uh, light come on. So you wanna make sure the overheat light doesn't come on on your dashboard. Or if you have an older model, I'll just have an analog gauge for uh, temperature. But just verifying that the cooling system, every part of the cooling system is functioning, including the cooling fan when you're in uh, hot stop and go traffic. So pretty much just waiting 15 minutes and I'll start the video when the fan kicks on. So the cooling fan is on. You can hear the kind of whirling noise that it makes. You have hot air coming out of your left side uh, cooling exit, and then it shut off. So you know the cooling system's uh, functioning 100% normally. Uh, no issues there, you can take it on a test ride. And after you allow the scooter to cool all the way back down, I would recommend checking the coolant level once again. So I usually leave this whole entire cover off 
so I could check the coolant level just one more time when it cools down. Maybe ideally if in a service center, I'd let it cool down enough before I return to a customer. And if you check it right now, just doing a visual, I do not want to remove this cap on this hot coolant reservoir. It's just above the high mark and that's pretty normal. So if you have it at the maximum mark and when the system's completely warm, the coolant's expanded and go in, has uh, risen above the maximum level there. All right, well, thanks for watching. You've successfully changed the coolant on your Vespa GTS. Pretty much don't need to worry about that for two years. So you can go ahead and button up the bodywork on your scooter, all pretty straightforward. I hope that helped you out. And if you're new to this channel, consider going into the YouTube search and just type Vespa Motorsport. That's our shop name here in San Diego. And you can go to our YouTube channel and find over 700 videos on how to's, accessories, products, everything about Vespas, including a couple of cool ride ones I've done in the past. But thanks for watching. And if it's your first time on this channel, consider subscribing. And I pretty much put out a couple of videos every week. I hope they're helpful to all you guys. Till next time, Robot here.